So for this carving, we're going to be carving on MDF. Why MDF? Well, this is a practice carving. And if we're going to practice, why go out and buy the most expensive wood you can in order to practice on it? Well, it's good wood and you'll get a lot out of it, but boy, you're going to bust the bank account by the time you go through practice. Because what is practice? It's the art of doing and redoing and redoing and redoing. Why? Well, because practice makes perfect. And if we don't ever practice and we're trying to go for that final, you know, high museum quality piece right off the get go, we're going to be let down. Well, let's take the worry out of spending so much money of worrying about, oh, if I mess up, I just spent $40, $40 on this, on this bit of wood or, you know, $30 on this bit of wood or even $5 or $10. Well, that's a lot of money to be spending on practice pieces that you're just going to set on a shelf or you might just toss in the garbage because you don't want anybody to see. So why practice on MDF? Well, there's several reasons. One is the cost. The cost is out of this world great. And second, MDF holds detail extremely well. Okay, so those two are good enough, right? But here's the kicker. MDF has no grain. There's no grain running through the wood that's going to be harder than the softwood. You know, a typical piece of wood has grain, and that those grain lines, those annual rings, are harder than the softwood. So you've got hard spots, soft spots, hard spots, soft spots, and that's going to be no fun to learn on, right? Especially if you try to save money by learning to power carve on pine or poplar. Poplar, not so bad. But we're going to carve on MDF. Why? Because we're learning hand control. We're learning how to control the tool. And we're also learning how to carve without the craziness of what can be in other woods with the, with the grain. So we're going to take all the worry out of it. We're going to take the cost worry out of it. We're going to take the grain worry out of it. We're just going to make it plain and simple practice. And that's what we want to do. So in this introductory video, we're going to carve a daisy. Why are we going to carve a daisy? Well, plain and simple, we got to start somewhere. I could have you carve various different things, but I think it's better to carve something that is, is relatively easy, but is still going to challenge you to learn something new. Okay, because if you can't start from, start from the very, very beginning, and go from the beginning to the end, it, it's not as much fun, at least for me. I find the greatest amount of enjoyment from my carving experiences because I start at the beginning and I work my way through and I get a finished piece. That, to me, is enjoyment. If I were to start with a rough out and teach you only how to carve the very final stage, just add the little bit of extra detail to it, it's a lot of fun and you're going to get something nice, but then it's a cookie cutter piece that everybody else is doing. And frankly, I don't want you doing a cookie cutter piece. I want you to be, be able to go find a picture on the internet, whatever it is, and sit down and say, oh, I really like that. I want to carve that. I want to put it on this project. And be able to know exactly what to do from beginning to end. And that is what carving on wood is all about. That's what the website's about. That's what the YouTube videos are about. That's what this is all about. And this is an introduction to power carving. And not really a, a big difference between intermediate and advanced carving, but there are more techniques that we learn along the way. There is more hand control, tool control that you got to learn. There, there's only so many burrs that we're going to use. Really, you can carve just about anything with a handful of burrs. So you don't have to go get all these specialty burrs, all these different shapes and sizes and stuff like that for what we're doing. What I'm teaching you is hand control, project, understanding how it all works, what each burr is going to do, and how to progress from the very beginning to the end. So let's get started and have some fun. Okay, to get us started, there's a few things that we have to understand to get our project laid out. What I'm using is MDF. 
Now this is a three quarter inch piece of MDF that I've, I've resawn into three eighths of an inch material, roughly. Okay, I just saw, just cut it right in half, right down the middle. And this project right here, we're doing the daisy. I'll show you that again. Here it is on the paper. All right, plain and simple. Nice little easy project to get us started to learn how to do things. Now I did it at, in a round design simply just because it's more fun. We could just do some boring all blah, you know, square, like anything and everything out there. Yeah, you can cut a square. But if you have the ability to cut around, why not put it on around? And this is a little bit of composition. So how do we get this? So first I resawed my wood. Here you go. Whoop, get that down there so you can see it really well. All right, so I got my resawn piece of MDF here. And all you got to do, this is a five inch circle that we're going to be working on. Take your compass, lay it out half the size of the circle, okay, two and a half inches like that. Just throw it down and scribe your mark, and you've got yourself a circle that you can cut out. So you can cut your circle out on anything that cuts wood. All right, now, if you have a, a bandsaw, a scroll saw, a jigsaw, a coping saw, uh, whatever will get through this wood. Now, even Dremels, you know, with the base, you can brrr and route it out and you're ready to go. The circle is just to have fun with, okay? If you don't want to cut a circle, don't cut a circle. If you want to save some wood, okay? Now, I've talked about this in previous videos. <laughs> this is super cheap. Go ahead and, and, and have a little bit of waste material. Cut a circle, cut an oval, cut something else that makes it fun for you when you have a finished piece to hold up and display. Yes, a nice square piece of wood is great, but there's so many different shapes we can do. So I'm going to go over to my bandsaw, cut this out really quick, and I'll be right back with you on how to apply the design to the wood. Here we go. From square to round. All cut out and ready to go. And that's just what you got to do. Have some fun with it. If you want a different shape than just a plain old circle, I think it's better than a square. But if you want to come up with something and just put this daisy into it, go right ahead. Hey, it's your project. It's your practice. You can keep it as simple or as complicated as you want. I would say keep it simple in the beginning because once we get confident on the MDF, you are going to be able to go to any any kind of wood that you possibly could want, whether that's maple or walnut, which are two of the most fantastic woods to carve, or something that everybody hates to carve with power, pine. Yeah, I've got some pine projects that I've done and hey, they turned out great. Why? Because I started on the MDF, I got good control of the handpiece of the tool, and then from there I was able to go in to a, a full-fledged hardwood, softwood, whatever it is, and have that hand control, that tool control, to be able to do what I want. And that's the key, right? Okay, we gain the control, we gain the practice, we gain it on the cheap, and then we go on to do larger projects, bigger projects, and put it on wood that is of higher quality, much higher quality than your MDF. Oh yeah, by far. Get on that walnut, Get on that, that beautiful red maple or, or select white maple, okay? Whatever you want, you can carve, all right? Some woods are more challenging than others. I can tell you that pine is not as challenging as people want you to believe. Now, there are power carving projects that are not in relief where I've done it on pine, and yes, it is a pain in the neck to carve because it's in the round and when you're doing a 3D project there are some more challenges than when you're just carving in, in relief okay and we'll get into that when I get into the more advanced carving videos where I'm showing you advanced techniques on pine on walnut on other other woods to help you gain the insights and make it easier for you to carve but for now let's keep apply our, our design to the wood and get carving. We're going to take our daisy. Now there's two ways you can do this, okay? If you want, you can take your pattern on paper, cut it out, apply some spray adhesive to the back of that and slap it on down and you're ready to go, okay? But there is a better way to do it and that's with transfer film, okay? 
This transfer film is, is see-through. Why do you want something that is see-through? Well, when you get into doing the advanced projects, when you get on actual wood, where you've got to place your design exactly right, this is what you want to be using. It is, it's got a peel and stick, it's got sticky right here. You put your pattern on the sticky side, cut it out, and when you apply it, you can see exactly where you're placing it. So that's what I'm going to use here. Now, where's my scissors? Before I get to cutting this out and applying it, let me tell you something really, really quick here. If you go to the websites that sell this stuff, and, and there's links on my website all about where to get it, best places, you know, it, it's all good. Let me it's give all... you a tip here. They will tell you that this, this type of film is supposed to be printed on with a laser printer, okay? Now, a laser printer is great, but I'm not going to go out and buy a laser printer just for doing this. Nope, it's not going to happen. All of my stencils are cut out on my regular inkjet printer, you know, run-of-the-mill inkjet printer. No big deal. Now, here's the differences between doing a laser printer and an inkjet printer. A laser printer uses heat. So what it's doing is it's heat setting that into the, the film, okay? It's setting it, okay? When you use an inkjet printer, it's going to come out and the ink's going to be wet. It's going to be able to be smeared, and you don't want it to smear, okay? You want to have a nice, crisp clean design to work from. How do you get that? You get that with your blow dryer. Even take your wife's or your blow driver, whoever it is that has a blow dryer, <laughs> the blow dryer, the neighbor down the street, if you don't have anything that has a blow dryer, or go buy you one really, really cheap. Okay, the cheapest one in the world will do the job. Why? You just stick it up against the wall. I found that's the best way to do it. You just lay it up against the wall, turn on that blow dryer, and dry the ink onto the film. Works just like a laser print. All right, now let's get applying this to the design. I could even show you cutting this out. Now, what am I doing? I am cutting this out a little bit rough right now, okay? But what I want to do, the design I give you has a five inch oval on it. So I'm going to go ahead, trim it around, and I'll be trim it right to that line and we'll be ready to go. Give me just a minute, I'll get right back okay, with Okay, here we go. I got it cut out on the round. Now, here is the thing. This is a practice piece. Yes, I cut it out on the round on the outside. I also cut this to fit so that it will match, more or less. All right, because that way I know that it will fit on the circle. Now, it's practice. If you're not doing it on, 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 a, on a round or anything like that, hey, you know what? Go ahead and just trim right around the edge and stick it on whatever you're carving on. No big deal. Practice, practice, practice. That's what this is for. You can print it out over and over and over again. Once you've done this once, you can go in and say, I don't like this area, I don't like this area. And you can even take a Sharpie marker, mark the sucker up, and say, okay, let's do it again. And once you get comfortable, you're good to go. So let's get this applied to the round. Now, I cheated, okay? This, like this, I peeled that up already. I come over here, <laughs> and it's not so easy. All right, you got to kind of work it over and work it over and work it over. All right, I did that off camera because sometimes it can be a real pain in the neck trying to get it off, but it'll come off. All right, so here we go. Now, there's the backing peeled off. Get that up out of the way, and we just stick it to the circle. Be as exact as you want, but just make sure your pattern stays on whatever it is you carved so it's not hanging over the edge. Now, maybe I should tell you this. This is important to know. I resaw this, this piece of 3 quarter inch MDF down to this. Now, there's a fuzzy side in the middle. All right, When you resaw it, you're going to get a fuzzy side and then the press side on the outside. Smack that with my ring. The hard side is the side you want to cut on. It may be intuitive to carve on the fuzzy side. Why? Because then you got a nice, straight, hard back, and it will sit nice and flat. Well, here's the problem with that. I tried carving on this side because the fuzzy side, the soft side, made a lot of sense. Just stick it on, and then I got a nice straight back. But what happened to the product project after I carved it, the piece wanted to bend and bow. Okay, because I went like this. 
I flipped it over and started carving on the hard surface. Okay, when I started carving on the hard surface, now I carve it down, I get the finished carving, and it stays flat. It sits flat. So if you need a flat side, you know, you can still see the roughs on edge here, maybe a little bit. Yep, that's a good picture of it. Just run it over your sander and flatten it off. Okay, no big deal. When we get done with the carving, I'm going to show you how to seal it so that it doesn't fuzz and, 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 and delaminate itself, okay? But for now, apply it to the hard side. That's the side that we want, okay? So stick it on. When you're working with MDF, you want to take something, whether it's a, a scraper, I, I just use, you know, here's a piece of wood that I use to press my, my burrs into the handpiece. I just run it over it really good. I want it to be stuck down really, really good. Why? Because MDF is a little bit different than finished products that you're going to be working on in the future. When you get on to, say, working with walnut, this stencil material applies perfectly so you can stain and finish, okay, apply your urethanes, polyurethanes, whatever, lacquer finishes to your wood. Get it completely done so it's a finished, finished piece. And then you can come in, lay your stencil film on, and carve on top of that. And then when you have control, you can carve the perfect edges and everything like that. And you will not, I repeat, will not scuff that finish. So, but with MDF, okay, you're going to want to apply good hard pressure. Make sure it's stuck down really good. Now, as you can see, okay, no smearing. Right here's some text under here that I put for me on. That was just to mark this piece of wood as mine. I cut them out a long time before and just got back to using them. You know, it's for my own personal projects. So I thought I'd throw it into the mix here. So really stick it down because MDF, even though it's on the hard side, has a little bit more fuzz. Okay, when we get into advanced projects or if you want to put it on a finished piece of wood, say you like this and you just want to put this on a finished piece of wood that's been sealed and cleared and everything else, go ahead. But you're not going to have to stick it down so hard. All right, it's not necessary. In fact, if you push down really hard, the sticky film is going to leave that sticky material on your wood once you're done applying the, the film, which is not a big deal. It'll come off on the areas with the, with the, the seal on it and everywhere else you're going to carve away. No big deal. But it it doesn't look as good, okay? It might be a little bit harder to work with. So, get it stuck on. Now, with that applied, we're ready to start carving. It's plain and simple. Just like that, we're ready to go. Okay, so before I start any carving, I want to make sure I've got all my burrs in place. Here they are. I just cut them out, put them in a thing. They came in a nice little box. Photocopied the top of the box, so I got the nice little number chart and the you know what it looks like the shape and stuff like that and i just stuck it on a little half inch piece of poplar that i had laying around just to make it easier for me to keep track of them because digging them out of the uh little case that it comes in is so hard it's much easier just to reach over and grab what you need really quick when you're switching out burrs it doesn't take hardly any time at all so i don't worry about it so the first thing i do as I go through all my carbides, I'll show you with this one really first. This one right here first. All right, this is a number 10 round carbide. And yep, we are zoomed in. I'm telling you, we are very, very close to this so we can see it. Now, I want to make sure that all my carbides are clean before I get started. To do that, we got to get all the char out of them that's built up from the last carving that I didn't clean out when I finished. So, what I do is I take me a pair of pliers. These are channel, you know, channel locks, pair of pliers. And what I did is I put hot glue on the end. So just get you a cheap pair. You can go over to Walmart or any place and just pick up a, a really inexpensive 99 cent or less pair. Put hot glue on there. And what it does is it, it gives you a good grip surface. Because as you can see, the shank of this the shaft of this burr is not very long, okay? It's, it's really small. It's really hard to hold on to, especially on the end of the, your fingers when you're trying to clean out the char. So get you a pair of these, okay? Really quick. 
stick it in there and that will hold it firm. And I like these because I could set it so that, here, let me back up. I can set it so that I got a comfortable hand position. All right, and it still holds it tight. I can open it or make it bigger or smaller, whatever, and it will hold it really good. Okay, the other thing you're gonna need is a wire brush, okay? Not just a brass brush, but it needs to be a steel bristle brush. Okay, it gets the gets the chart out of the out of the flutes of the carbide a whole lot easier, okay? And what you're gonna do is just very lightly, gently, you're gonna go over it and over and over it. And you're going to peel out all the char that's in there so that the cutting surface, which isn't very big anyway, because these are very small burrs. Okay, there's the end of my finger. There's the burr. Okay, it's very small. Okay, we're looking at a very small scale here with what we're doing. But we can do very, very large panels with this in great, great detail. Okay, but you want to get the char out of there. So that's the first thing I do. So I took a few minutes, pulled out all the char, and now we're ready for the first step carving. <laughs> 